Hey there everyone, Travis with Green Our Planet here. Today we're gonna to be talking about photosynthesis and lighting, so let's go ahead and check it out. For millions of years, algae, moss, and plants have all used the same chemical process that we call photosynthesis. For this process, algae, moss, and plants all use the same pigment that we call chlorophyll. Chlorophyll helps capture photons of light from the sun, or it could be from another light source, and along with carbon dioxide and water, the plant algae or moss can create sugars that it uses to build and grow or to feed and sustain itself. A byproduct of this process is oxygen that we all breathe here in the atmosphere. While a good bit of the oxygen that we breathe is created by plants here on land, it's interesting to note that a large percentage of the oxygen is also created by phytoplankton, which are tiny algae that float around in the ocean, and also by marine plants, which are plants living in the ocean. Plants really only use two colors for their growth. They use red, and they also use blue. They actually don't use green or yellow too much. That's why they look green and a bit yellow is because those are the colors they're actually reflecting and not using. So you can see LED lights here. They actually provide just the colors that plants are using. The red and the blue, and that kind of gives the pinkish color that you see there. Plants grow well under fluorescent light bulbs. You'll want to experiment with the mixture between cool white and daylight light bulbs. However, these bulbs together do put off the correct light bands needed for plant photosynthesis. Generally for plants, light is something that fluctuates a lot. You can think of outside, clouds are moving overhead, the sun is moving throughout the day. So the amount of light that plants are receiving outside changes a lot. When we can provide light supplementally indoors using any of these methods, that is gonna provide more ideal lighting conditions than outdoors usually does. However, it is difficult to create supplemental light that is as strong as the sun. Timers are really helpful when working with supplemental lighting indoors. They can control the amount of time that your lights turn on or off. When you have a long daylight period, usually we think about 18 hours on with six hours off. That's gonna keep your plants growing big in the vegetative stage. And then once you cut the daylight hours shorter down to 12 hours on and 12 hours off, that usually is going to trigger your plant to begin to flower and produce fruit. The plant's change in its life cycle triggered by the change in daylight hours is called photoperiodism. When plants actually move towards the sun, such as how sunflowers follow the sun throughout the day, that's called heliotropism. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot and be sure to tune in next time.